Hello everybody and welcome! My name is Ursa Ryan and we're playing Shizhong today! Korea, look at that! Very fun! Hangul! This is the leader out of the three that people have been a little bit less excited about, but honestly, any excuse to play Korea is a good excuse for me. Like, one of these abilities that doesn't look so good on paper, but when you get stuck into it, especially late game, this could be a lot of fun indeed. And whilst you could rock up onto Discord for all of the mods and maps that I use, yes, you can copy and paste them onto your computer. These are the details that I am playing today. We have a continents and islands map with a balanced start position. Barbarian clans, secret societies modes all turned on. And we'll come back to secret societies in a second because I have a bit of a plan today. But it is a small six player map. And what we've done today is I have forced in the five AI, one from each leader pack so far that I deem to be the best of each leader pack, or certainly if not the best, my favourite of them, which, you know, is entirely subjective, but I think it should add an element of fun. From memory, I believe we have New Congo, Tokugawa Japan, Yonglei China, Ptolemy Egypt, so Cleopatra, and then Theodora. I know, not Ludwig. Theodora. I love Theodora. I love Byzantium. But I thought it'd be fun to let the AI rock up with all of those five whilst we play Sejong. My aim today, basically, to do a career, go heavy on the science, but instead of going necessarily for a scientific victory, I'm going to be using the Huacha, I'm going to be using all of my additional science and culture generation to push me towards a little bit of domination. I don't know who I've got on my continent and on my islands, but I've probably got at least two people on the continent I'm on. I'm gonna push through the early tech tree, we're gonna obviously unlock Sewans as quickly as we can. One of the best districts in the game, I know I say that all the time, but this one is an absolute gem. And then I'm gonna push through bronze working, through iron working, all the way to apprenticeship, so that when I get to man at arms, I have a bunch of men at arms ready, with a bunch of iron, battering rams, and probably a great general, if I'm lucky. It's a medieval era war. That's what we're going to be pushing towards. Kind of rocking up into universities, having a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to this. Plus, Hypatia is the first scientist. Any game where she pops up as the first scientist is a good game for me. Oh, I'm looking forward to this so much. And as discussed, Barbarian Clans mode, I like having it on. I actually think the game is better with it turned on. And Secret Society's mode is turned on as well. I haven't played a game with the Hermetic Order in a long time. And the Hermetic Order get a unique university. And that works very well with Korea, so I was thinking that could be fun. Plus, ley lines actually do not stack with Seowans, so we're gonna have to play this really weirdly. Let's just get going, shall we? Turn one, and as we look at this start, we have a double wheat, we have a river, we have a bunch of hills, two wine, no, three wine down here as well, and a bunch of plains hills, so we have a lot to get stuck into. Now, one option is to move off the hill towards this sugar. It puts me on a floodplain, but it gives me instant access to the wheat, puts me closer to that food tile, and takes me away from the desert. I could also settle in plain that would give me the additional production from the tile. If I wanted to preserve that one three tile as well, I could move down a tile to this one too, and that would let me work the wine immediately, which is a two three one tile, that's brilliant. As well as giving my city center two food and two production. What I'm also looking for is where I'm gonna put my Seer one. Now, as we've seen before, the Seer one is a campus replacement that you can build twice as quickly. It always has four science adjacency, which is crazy good. However, you cannot put it next to other districts, otherwise you start to lose that bonus. To throw it in, you want to make sure that around that district you can put mines, because the mines get one science extra, and th uh, farms, because they get food extra. So whereas normally you would look to put a camper, say, on this hill next to the mountains. Did I mention they can only be built on hills? I think I might have forgotten that. They can only be built on hills, but in this case, I cannot improve the mountain, and a plantation goes on the wine, so I've kind of lost my benefit of having two of those tiles around my say one. So I'm really looking for a tile on a hill with tiles around it that can be improved. So for instance, if I were to settle in place and then put my say one there, I would get a good farm from that wheat resource, but there's a tundra tile that stops me from using it fully. So my starting location is going to be, I'm going to move down a tile, I'm going to force myself into probably going for Petra, not a problem with career because you're going to be going towards apprenticeship and education anyway, so mathematics and Petra is a very natural diversion for you. But by moving away from that, it means that I'm going to be able to put my say one on this tile instead, which allows me to work one of these wheat, gives me a bunch of mines, three of them and three farms. So that's a really good mix. So yeah, for me, I like that. Let's just quickly move. Looks like 
this might be a bigger desert than I had planned for, but that just means Petra is going to be really, really good because look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six desert hills. Oh, yeah, that's going to be lovely. Yep, let's just get cracking. Yep, I want to delete these. Oh, the last game, I forgot to click that button and then none of the tacks would remove themselves. And it was the most annoying thing. But here's Soul. Oh, I love this new career color. It's back into the old retro Civ 5 colors. I mean, it is a Civ 5 leader, of course. Looking very cool. But before we get started today, a quick update on something concerning. Here is Ursa Bear. Ursa Bear was unfairly expelled from Oxford University's Civ 6 program. Ursa Bear now has 30,000 signatures. And with that, magical powers were bestowed upon him to see the invisible. And Ursa Bear noticed something. An invisible, kind, helpful man. A man called Paul. Don't let Ursa Bear be distracted by the terrible spy Paul. Help Ursa Bear focus on Sankor. Will you subscribe today? Thank you. And back to the video. Now it's a continent and islands map i am going to go for the double scout start you probably could get away with going slingers or warriors instead but i don't mind the exploration i want to see if we can get to a golden age because if i can get a golden science eureka yeah it would be really cool and as i mentioned before we're playing as career we have to just click on writing and then pray that we can unlock this as soon as we can trust me these districts are amazing a barb encampment immediately do i just bypass it or do i try and kill it that is all Always the question. Maybe they're going to attack me? I don't know. We'll see. No, they didn't. It's good era score and it's probably going to find me soon. Yeah, look at the scout. The scout's going to just cross the river now and go and find my capital. So yeah, okay. We'll try and get rid of this quickly. Owls of Minerva discovered and Cahokia is just above me. They found me. That's quite handy. So we have ourselves the title. As I say, I'm going to go hermetic order. I don't normally go hermetic order and Korea is always a good opportunity to use them. I'm going to... Do I save my governor for hermetic order and see where the ley lines are? Or do we just take it as a bit of a gamble? We might take it as a bit of a gamble. I could Amani strap this into Cahokia and see if we can get ourselves some era score. Let's do that. Yeah, in we go. New Congo. Now, I liked the Congo because of the obvious bonuses you get from settling on your own continent. 10% to all yields, relic bonuses. They are amazing. Having them on my continent, however, is a bad thing. She hates anybody that's also on her own continent. I'm going to have a bit of a problem. Oh, a goodie hut though. Maybe that'll make do with this. Oh, looks like Congo are going to help me take down this encampment. That's actually pretty handy for me. A cad directly below me and oh, Congo's done exactly the same thing. There is Amani in a cad. Interesting. I really hope that means that we're not going to have a problem with a cad. However, melee and anti-cavalry unit attacks do full damage to the city walls. That's really good. And they want an encampment. I did want to get one of those anyway, so that's pretty handy. I think a cad's going to be really good. If I was going to go for a man at arms rush like I was thinking, it means I don't even need to take siege equipment with me. So that could be really cool. What's in the goody heart? Void singers. Interesting. Not what I wanted. And something else. I didn't actually see what they gave me there. Was it a population? Might have been a population. I don't think it was gold. Oh, well, whatever it was, I will take it. Mahanja Dairo. Oh, the barbarians are really throwing themselves at me now. That is painful. But there's a natural wonder directly above me. I think I'm the first to find it. I'm the first to find Kokia. I could go and settle near it. But just finding it gives me era score. Settling near it would give me era score as well. There is Hermetic Order. Perfect. Okay, at least we've unlocked it. So I don't have the governor right now because we went for Amani. But we know it's there. And oh my lord, it's looking, it's looking fine. Oh, furs right underneath it. Yeah, we're going to have to go and settle near that. I really will. As much as I want to go and kill that barb clan immediately, I have a worry that these horsemen will just then swarm me and kill me. So I'm just going to have one more turn of healing just so that when I pop on top of that, I have more of a chance of surviving. I'm going to send this scout over in this direction. I've got this one heading in the other direction. And we're going to move Amani off Mahanjadai... Oh, no, off Kahokia onto Mahanjadai. We're just going to do this old tour. Give myself two era score every time we do it. We're already on eight out of 11. It's only eight turns in. We've got four that are on the way from my unique district. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed this is all looking good so far. Let's get that settler out as well. Congo really is close. Look at that. Yeah, look, as I kind of feared, the horsemen would have just absolutely rushed me there. So we're just holding on. Two turns away from getting discipline. That'll massively help. Then at least my warrior is a bit tougher. Yeah, they're attacking me on this hill. Means I'm fortified. I'm on a hill. I'm about to get a promotion. I think I'm okay just holding that position for now, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on that warrior. It could be a little bit close. Well, Mahanjadara wants me to kill this barbarian clan, by the way. 
So they're going to give me an envoy. We've actually got some really good quests. Eureka for irrigation is a very easy one to get because I've got actual farms that I can put down. So that's really handy. Oh, well, Congo are back. But this... <laughs> Look at how many horsemen it's spawning. Blimey. There's discipline. There's God King. Let's get the Pantheon going as quickly as possible. But now my warrior is a bit tougher. Ah. The problem is if I don't move on to it now, Congo are going to. So I'm going to have to do it. Take the fall. I could buy a Barbarian Horseman for 95 gold, but they're useless. Because you can't upgrade them. Like, Barbarian Horsemen are just, they're just the worst. Like, there's, there's nothing else to really say about them. Let's see what happens. Oh, Congo move away. And they're being chased. Interesting. Okay. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to dis... Do I disperse the clan now? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Get the era score. Three era score because it was within six of my city. I see this pop up a lot. People say, oh, you don't get era score if it's not within six tiles of your city. It's not true. You just get two era score rather than three. This is the bonus era score you get for it being close. Oh, I've even discovered Sanguine Pact. Amazing. What's in this tribal hut? A builder. Okay, I was really hoping we'd get a builder. Builder or relic, but builder will do just nicely. There's irrigation boosted. That means I've got an envoy at Kohokia. Let's see if I can get my warrior to actually survive this carnage. Oh, we're going to be attacked and surrounded. Oh, no. Lost the warrior. Okay, we got Mahanja Dairo vote. We got the era score. I'll take that as a sacrifice play. Luckily, I found a second barbarian clan to the south of me, and that one will allow me to buy a warrior. So I will just buy a single warrior just so I've got an army. It was cheaper to do that than buying my own. I've got a settler to escort in a second as well. Stay in your corner. Here we go. Look at that. Minus 12 relations. Yeah, Congo, Congo never likes you. If you settle near Congo, or you even start near Congo, it's not even like I settled near them. I just happened to be near them. It's not good. Oh, we found uh, two more city-states, by the way. Singapore, which is over there, and Leventa, which is over here. Both of been discovered before which is a problem one thing i'm really keeping an eye on is scientific city states i am kind of in the mindset to save as many of my envoys as i can until we can get a scientific city state on site because or on site because i want to get my libraries and my universities up as powerful as possible this is going to be an absolutely driven science game science into domination muscat uh, i am the first on muscat right there we go so amani off you pop another bunch of era score please Thank you so much. With the Congo directly south of me, I am very tempted to kind of forward settle and then get a little bit of defensive strength and just hold the line. I don't want Congo to settle right up to me and force me into this frozen north. If I can settle kind of in between where I am and Akkad now, I open up a route where I can settle all down the right hand side of this continent and that gives me space. There's a lovely banana tile over there. We've got two sources of ivory and these are all plains hills as well. So either I'll be settling on that tile or that tile. I don't quite know yet. We'll see what I find when I bring this warrior down, but both are looking pretty tasty at the moment. Barbarians have spawned over there and they will give me a galley. Interesting. That is some era score if we need it, if we need the first boat. I'm just going to rush out a slinger quickly as well. I want to get my sail one down as fast as I can, but I just want to get my army score kind of comparable to Congo's as quickly as possible. It's all very well and good saying I'd like to avoid medieval warfare, but... Oh, sorry. I should avoid warfare until the medieval era, I should clarify. But they could well declare on me. And if they declare on me, then well, I haven't got a choice in the matter, have I? I don't even know what I'm thinking. Of course I can't settle there. It's too near a cad, isn't it? So it's going to be either this tile or this tile. But I like settling this tile because I get instant access to the bananas. But where am I going to put my sail on? It would lose one tile from the ivory. But I don't think I've got any perfect sixes around here because of the desert and things and the mountain and the luxuries. So I think I will actually pop it there. It would be a mine hit heavy say one but i've got some decent food tiles that i can pump in so yeah now that, that'll do for now slinger is ready in three turns i will wait for that to happen look at that new suzerain writing unlocked first thing you need to do after getting writing is just go straight for mining because you want those mine improvements as quick as you can but muscat it's mine i haven't met any other city states which is a bit unfortunate but that's fine train a heavy chariot is an easy quest tempted to move away but i think i'll leave myself into muscat for now I, the thing i like about discovering city states is that they show you where all the tribal huts are and i like tribal huts i like them a lot actually the longer i wait in the city state as well the more diplomatic favor i'll get so that's looking pretty nice city number two settled on turn 23 
Probably could have done that a little bit quicker, but never mind. If it's a 3-2 banana tile, we're working from turn one, which is just wonderful. 50 gold for my Sayer 1 district. Let's get that going in nine turns. Anybody getting scientist points? A couple of people are getting scientist points. That's a bit of a problem. I would like this great scientist as a priority. We'll come back to that in a second. Foreign trade, we're going to switch to. Just keep an eye on the tech tree. I do not want to go into the classical era early because of my ability, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Delicate arch. Am I the first to find that? No, I'm not. I mean, it's very near Congo. It would have been very lucky had I found that first as the Alpine promotion, but we were on 17 era score. Count that as 18. Oh, that's an envoy. Now I have a choice. Either I can permanently suzerain either Mahanjadairo or Cahokia, or I can pop my envoy into either Leventa or Singapore and then switch over Amani. I'm going to pop myself into Singapore, I think. This is going to discover a lot of the map for me, and then I'll switch Amani over. Yeah, just she's working overtime at the moment. She is era scoring me like crazy. That's going to give me three era score. Uh, sorry, two era score. That'll take me to 20. My unique district will take me to 24. I think a golden age, I don't want to say is guaranteed, but I'm optimistic. The good thing is that all of these barbarians that spawned between myself and Congo, they have really, really eaten to Congo's natural warrior base there. So we have, we've got very lucky. Three turns, say one. I'm going to have to buy the tile, but it's okay. I will do that. I will be happy to do that. Oh, interesting. So one thing I have discovered is I was going to actually buy a galley from this tribal, this barbarian city, I should say, in order to go and explore the map. But this is actually an inland sea. And that is amazing because now all I can think about is doing a canal city out of this. I mean, can you blame me? Can you blame me? I've got a, I've got a canal this, surely. Oh, Congo just moved past a tribal village. I think it's probably because the scout was in the way there and it blocked its natural progression, but that should give me the era score I need to guarantee the golden age this era. So I'll take that, that's lovely. And I get an archery boost. It's like the barbs wanted to give me that boost. I love it. So as the Seer 1 completes in my capital, a few things happen. Firstly, I get four era score. Next, I get four science per turn. Beautiful. That doubles my science per turn. And then finally, this farm that I'm working gets an additional food. Oh, it's good. It's good. I'm just waiting to put this mine down. Then I'll have a one, three, one science tile down, which is just amazing. Now we have a bit of a choice. I really, really want this scientist because that one science per turn from all libraries that's huge huge in the game and it will massively play into my ability a little bit later so my capital is going to go straight onto campus research it's going to give me nice little science boosts i know i should probably be settling but i just really want to guarantee that we get that scientist first it's very important to me oh this barb is doing this deliberately go on yoink yoink yourself off go over there thank you thank you so much two era score we've just discovered singapore nothing really over here that's that exciting for me and then we're going to go for a relic oh my goodness four faith per turn there we go that'll guarantee us a very quick and tasty pantheon desert folklore is what congo have gone for Interestingly, Congo haven't found anybody else and doesn't look like we found another continent. So I think it's just the two of us on this one continent. If that's true, that's awesome. We like that. That's that's really, really cool. Now, let's just quickly get this mine out. There you go. There's craftsmanship boosted. We don't need God King anymore because we now have a beautiful relic. So we'll go urban planning to give myself a little bit more production. My capital is going to grow to a tasty four pop. Then it'll start working that mine. Yeah, this is so far so good. What do I I want now animal husbandry let's find where the horses are and then i need to find where the iron is it's very important i have a ample supply of iron otherwise i won't be able to do a mana arms rush a little bit later into the game i'm also going to pull my slinger back i just don't trust this barbarian encampment i feel like that's going to attack me at some point so i'm moving this unit back i'm sort of balancing having recon units on the border between me and congo just to preempt any attack but i think we're okay for now yeah you see look congo is just going to leave a warrior there you just tell already, can't you? Right, animal husbandry, good. There are some horses. We have at least one saucy horsey. One thing I would like is an archer or two. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a slinger in this city, then a library. That will give me two slingers. I'll have one, one warrior, two slingers. I think that'll be perfect. Then we can get the archer upgrade and we can make sure that we have at least a small army just in case Congo goes for me. They do have 200 military strength, but I think I'm looking okay for now. He says confidently. 
Pantheon Time. There are a couple of options that jump out to me. Fertility Rites gives me the three builder in my capital, which I can immediately use to go and get some horses, and I could get the wine improved immediately as well, maybe chop out a couple of projects. I could go God of Craftsmen to get the production and the thief on the horses, and hopefully the iron later. Goddess of the Hunt, I've got a couple of camps in my second city. Divine Spark is always fun with anyone that uses a lot of campuses, because that extra point on each library would be big, big news for me. Don't have any libraries yet but I will do very soon. I think Divine Spark will give me more later into the game but I think Fertility Rights would give me more right now. I'm tempted to go for right now. I like growth rate as well. People sleep on this. 10% growth rate in all cities. That's really, really big, especially in a big war game later. I'm doing it. I'm going with my gut instinct on that one. It's a pantheon that I know and love. I'm gonna flick to irrigation quickly as well, just so I can get that wine in. Maybe I can sell it to the Congo so that I can get some gold off them before they attack. Like, okay, this scout is annoying me. I'm trying not to attack it here. Uh, they've got a heavy chariot. Interesting. Interesting. We'll just pull our units back. I think we are probably going to get attacked here. My capital's doing the good work though. We've just done our first project. We've leapt ahead in terms of getting that first scientist. I really want a library in my capital. I really do. How much is the Singapore rush? 200 gold for five warriors. I could do this. Once Congo attack me, I could levy Singapore and then rush their, yeah, rush a six population city down here. This, this could be a fundamental mistake for Congo actually. I will have a CAD declare on me though. That is something that could be a little bit more of a problem. Hmm. Yeah, the heavy chariot is definitely on its way to me. Not a problem. Let's get the plantation sorted. Okay, Congo, I'm going to give you this because you're going to give me all of your gold. And then if you declare on me, I'm just going to get my wine back. That's 200 gold. I don't know whether or not it's a good idea to just leave 200 here just in case I need to levy Singapore. It is tempting. It is tempting. I can't quite get archery right now. Let's get a turn or two into bronze working, then archery. I want to finish. Do I want to finish the sling out or do I want to finish it as an archer? I'll save myself gold if I finish it as an archer. Yeah, let's do that then. Fine. There you go. Yep. Here comes the war. We knew that. We've come to set your lands and your flags on fire. Oh, that, that feels mean. Not both. Okay, so I think we're going to take advantage of this little diversion then. So hang on, we have a warrior which is being protected by not only forest, but also a hill. So I'm going to actually just hold that tile for a little bit. This archer will be finished in four turns. That is glorious. We'll go bronze working quickly. I have a scout that's going to help me just to stop a cad from marching in. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do the old swoop in here. Uh, let me just double check. Nope, Congo doesn't have enough envoys to take this off me so we're going to go bam mercenaries boosted here is a load of warriors mwahaha <laughs> luckily they've put a load of farms out for me so this might be even easier a fight than i was concerned about i'll wait a couple of turns to get the gold to get that slinger now i know that my capital could be producing units but i'm so close so close to that great scientist it is worth holding out for here and yep they didn't attack me perfect that means that my slinger has got an attack it's all looking lovely 32 production from that chop that is not quite enough to finish the project but it's very close. That should guarantee me the first scientist. We can get the library down and go from there. I'm going to do the old swooperoonie here. Move myself to be flanking around Congo. I don't have military tradition yet. I do want that as quickly as possible. And I've got flanking. Flanking is good. Hopefully they'll attack me with enough units here that I can get away with this. Oh yeah, all of their armies to the north apart from this one warrior. Uh, and they, they might look, they've actually started putting war, um, walls up. It's not great. It's not great. But there is another mine sorted. You can see we've almost got this uh, project complete. So let's now pump out a couple of archers. That warrior has decided to go elsewhere. Fine. That gives me an option to just actually move myself around. And yeah, look at that. We've got tons of spare gold. So let's get this archer sorted now. This warrior, it's holding itself firm. I don't know if I want to let this warrior die or not, but I think if it can survive one turn and it can promote itself and that'll be a very handy warrior after that. So we'll see if we can do that. Are you going to survive? Yes, you are going to survive. This is such a weird war. This really is. It's kind of like I'm attacking on one front, defending on the other. Yeah, they're just making me odd attack at me. Oh, I lost that scout, which is really annoying. That means that they're probably a cat is going to pillage my campus, but never mind. There is the first 
Great scientist. She's the one I wanted. She is brilliant. I'll get a three library in my capital. I'm now pumping out a lot of archers. Archers are really handy, but I'm just going to move this one back. I should be able to protect my lands fairly well now, and I've got battle cry on this warrior, which is just amazing. Let's see if I can knock back a cad. You cross the river, get yourself a better attack. This city is now sieged, which means I can attack with impunity. And hopefully, six population will be enough. With, um, if I could just sort of stick Amani over, I might be able to hold on to the city. I don't know. Maybe. There's bronze working. Oh, I wasn't as optimized as I'd hoped for. Do I have any iron? Yes, there's iron over there. Okay, that's really good. That is handy. Oh, there's iron there as well. Perfect. Two sources of iron. All right, let's go for swordsmen then. Let's let's get serious now. Maybe maybe we didn't want to go into war this early, but you know, if, if our hand is forced, then our hand is forced. It's just a shame that Congo grabbed a cad so early. That is just unfortunate. Oh, look, we're being attacked. Bit of a counterattack there. Um, that warrior got hit quite badly, but but it's fine because we can actually fall back a tile. I think we're doing okay. There's a garrison in that city now. I'm going to just fall back one tile. Then it gives me more defense. And there is the library. 13 science. Hey, we're doing okay. It's fine. One, two, three, four attacks. And then, oh, it's not going to be enough, but I'm going to just hold myself there because then it'll force them to attack me and kill that unit like so. It didn't put the walls up. Perfect. That's all we wanted to see. City has been taken. Now, what is the chance of me holding on to this city? Not too bad. Nine. Yeah, actually, you know what? That's not too bad. I could move Amani in. I'd lose all of these warriors, but I'm tempted to do that. I'm actually quite tempted to do that. Yeah, you know what? Fine. Amani, move over. Let's hold this city. They're still my friends. Oh, no, they're not my friends anymore, are they? They're, they're just generic troops. But if I can survive long enough to get a peace deal, I can hand this city back. Hopefully, guarantee that we get a decent peace deal from this. Fingers crossed. We'll see, see what happens. This will confuse them. Anyway, we've got a situation now where we have one of their cities and there's nothing they can really do about that. Oh, annoyingly though, the city-state units are going to just camp out on the tile I wanted to improve to try and get some luxuries into that city. So that's not ideal, but in a good thing for me. The AI is, they're throwing troops forward, but I have enough archer defense here that I think I'm going to be absolutely fine. I'm training a spearman because it's a city-state quest. I'll get a heavy chariot soon after that. Somehow, somehow I think we've caused enough of a mess here to kind of got away with this slightly. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, why did you not have enough movement? I guess it's a marsh tile, isn't it? That's a bit annoying. Never mind. The scout might die. Get myself some faith, though. Might be a useful resource later. Might be one turn away from being able to get peace. We'll give it a go. Yeah, that scout died. Never mind. Would you take peace? Would you take peace? No. But, oh, you give me nine gold per turn if I give you your city back. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. That would mean that we survived that early war. And you know what? Against a, a rampaging Congo, I would actually take that. Now, I do have a bit of strength, but they're throwing up walls. I don't want to attack until I've got mana arms. It's just, it's not worth it. So yeah, you know what? I'm going to give the city back. We'll take your gold and six diplo favor as well. Bit of a bloody nose for them, but that's good. That's a good chunk of gold for me there. Wonderful. And now Amani can pick another place to go. You know, I quite liked having Singapore. That was pretty handy. Just, just on the edge of the Congo, keeping a check on them. I don't think it's going to be super effective next time because the warriors were really good when there were no walls, but maybe I focus on taking a cad. It won't be long until I have a couple of envoys and I've got another quest in a couple turns. Yeah, you know what? Fine. Amani, over to a cad. If we can steal that city-state, that will be a huge turning point in the sort of power dynamics of this continent. Four turns into the next era. Anyway, this archer, you just heal yourself. I've got a spearman. I have another archer, so that means we've got three archers now. Pretty good army. Pretty good army to have, and I could build an encampment thinking about it. That would help me to get a great general. I, that, that is something I really do want. Settler, builder. Oh, there are some choices. I do want to settle out a little bit. I could use at least four cities. At least. The very minimum I'd like four cities. And look at this. I could just plonk myself on top of a wine and that would later on act as a beautiful little canal for me. Not that I would build my entire plan around a canal city, but this is uh, Sarayan. That, that is exactly what I would do. <laughs> I would... I would do that. All right, let's just get the settler. I think if we if we continue to wait for too long, we're just not going to get the infrastructure out that we want. And 
Yeah, Iron Working, I, I can't get that just yet. Because as soon as I get that into the classical era, then my Hangul ability, it starts, it activates, it's wonderful. When I go into the first technology of a new era, I double my science per turn as culture. There are a lot of tricks we can use to make sure that that is as optimized as possible. My Sirwan has been fixed again. Yay! I like that. I'm going to get a builder in this city there because we've got some ivory to go and make a better. Well, let's sell the wine as well. I need the gold per turn. Gold is way more exciting for me right now. Yeah, Congo know what they're doing. They are putting walls up in every city they can get their hands on, but that's fine. We don't mind that. State walk force is now done. Normal age for Congo. Yeah, you shouldn't have attacked me, should you? And this is where we could go free inquiry. Eureka's provide an additional 10% of technology costs. That is very handy. It'll let me shoot up the science tree super quickly. Things like making a trade route, pastures, three mines, that'll all give me 50% science instead of 40. It works so well with Korea, it's crazy. And we can't put it off any longer. Let's have a look at Hermetic Order. See if we get some good ley lines. Oh, this is always the risk because you never do. So already there's one in my city. I like that. Oh my goodness, look at that. There's three in the desert. Ooh. Oh, I like that. Petra Amazing City anyway. Oh my goodness, Cahokia has four of them. Okay, we may do some city-state killing today. I, I take no apology for that at all. There's one in the Congo's lands too, down south as well. Okay, they're not everywhere. They're not so abundant that we can't not think about them, but they're, they're pretty much everywhere, so that's awesome. Two city-states, one to heavy chariot. Do you now? Okay, I was just waiting on wheel because we can mine a resource and get that one for three. And also if I mine an iron mine, then I should get like three Eurekas all in one. So that's kind of what I've been waiting for. I'm gonna get the builder and saw. Let's just not wait. Let's just go and get that iron. Get the horse. We've got tons of boosts that we can unlock pretty much in one go here. Masonry is almost boostable as well. Pick up sailing. Early empire. Political philosophy. Don't worry. We will think very soon about going into a better government. Now, this is unfortunate. Unfortunate that we're going to miss the scientist who gives mathematics boost. I did kind of want that, but he's not a very good scientist, actually. I would prefer to pick up the newer one. So when you get the Eureka from Celestial Navigation, Mathematics and Engineering, if they're already triggered, you get them three as techs. It's a big deal. That's a really good one. Ancient walls, two sea resources, and... For each specialty districts. Very difficult Eurekas to get. So yeah, now that's what I'm kind of looking forward to. Let's get a source of force. Horseback riding completed in 50% Eureka boost rather than 40. Oh, it makes a big difference that. Oh my goodness, perfect. The barbarians put a galley in this one tile lake. Oh, I love it. Breaking wave, you, you are legends. Legends of this game. I will not complain. I will not complain. I will not doubt. So here's the thing. If I pick up iron working, that's going to trigger my ability. And I feel like it's a little bit too early to trigger my ability, but I would kind of like to get to my government as quick as possible. So maybe it's not. What I will do is I am just going to improve this iron. No, I won't. Hang on. <laughs> oh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Saul level up to level five, to, to five population. Then I'm going to do it. So we'll, I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to do in a second, but let's go and get that wine quickly. There's astrology. Okay, five population. That means what I can do now is force science working. If I press this button, all of my citizens will rearrange themselves to work only the tiles that give me science. Now, and I've gone to 13.9. It does mean that I'm working both these mines and the specialist slot there. I'm not working this tile, so I'm going to have to undo that quickly just to let it science focus. There we go, 14.8. I don't think this is going to make too much of a difference in this city, to be absolutely honest with you. Nope, it's not. And I don't know. It's a bit debatable as to whether or not putting campus research grants on the turn makes a difference or not. But I'm going to let that go for one turn to let the science recalculate itself. And then I'm going to do the improvement. It's, this is very convoluted. I know it's very convoluted. You're just going to have to trust me that it's worth it. So we're going to go from 19.8 science per turn. There you go, to 22.9 science per turn working projects did improve my science per turn but you have to let it roll for one turn so remember that now we're going to improve the mine this is going to give me three eurekas at once 
So we're going to improve iron for iron working. We're going to improve a mineable resource for wheel. And I'm also going to boost apprenticeship as well for three mines. So because of that, we just picked up two times my science per turn as culture, which is 45, three culture, which has given me early empire and most of political philosophy just in one big go. And uh, all I need to do now is just undo all of the damage of the ridiculous tiles that I left working in my empire. So I have a spare governor. Do I want to go Pingala or Magna? It's got to be Pingala. It just it just has to be. Too much science at stake here. You can see we've got wheel now. That's awesome. I need a heavy chariot as soon as possible because I want to get that boost with all the city states. But there is a camp. Gives me access to ivory. What are you going to give me for that open border? That's a terrible deal. No, don't give me rubbish deals like that, Congo. You can do better than that. I know you can. How much gold per turn have you actually got at the moment? Not a lot. I think I might have traded all of that away from you. So yeah, in fairness, there's not much you could have done there. Oh, Congo have picked up Feed the World for me. That's polite of them. Thank you very much for doing that. That's, that's, that's a great thing to do. Lovely. Now, the first great general has gone, but I think the game has four great generals in the classical era. Yeah, they do. I want one of them. Doesn't matter which one. I just want one of them. And I'm getting a lot of faith per turn. That'll help me. I'm also going to pick up, there we go, the scientist, but I really wanted to. So that's going to be two scientists guaranteed. That's all I really need. I don't, I don't need the rest. Okay, trader is ready. I could get myself another envoy, Mahanja Diorite, and three gold per turn. I'd probably end up losing that trade route at some point to barbarians, but hey, that is a suzerain. And the more suzerains I can get, the more allied troops I have in my inevitable clash again. Against Congo. I need to save up my gold per turn, by the way. That was the currency boost. That's looking good. Get one more settler out. Oh, it's such a balancing game, beginning of any game, between getting enough cities out and not oversettling and just focusing on actually improving the cities you've got. Oh, Granada, the weird one. Just sort of flicked around the map for me there. Not a problem. I quite like the idea of going oligarchy for later, but I think I might switch to that one. I think Classical Republic is going to be the better government for me right now because it's giving me more scientist points and more amenities and housing in all of my cities. It should hopefully help me to just actually be a little bit happier. Happy. Congo really has no gold at the moment. That's quite remarkable. Now, as I was looking at which policy slots to put into my government, I noticed Granada wants a great scientist, which is quite exciting. That's something I can absolutely do. So in anticipation and preparation for that, I'm going to retain Diplomatic League into my government because that will give me a bonus envoy. Strategos is also going in. General points. I would like a great general. That's a really cunning and secret way to get it. And then urban planning goes in the two extra production just helps my settlers go through look at that oh perfect we'll go from two cities to five cities hopefully by turn 75 or so that's my plan here i have a cunning plan everyone cunning plan mysticism would be quite entertaining but i think actually sticking to the top of the tree and going for military training feudalism recorded history no let's go drama and poetry no hang on i keep changing my mind mysticism for the envoy yes ursa ryan always has a consistent plan he never changes his mind halfway through or something it's not not like him at all horseback riding is finished currency is finished oh apprenticeship is it's it's medieval i'd kind of wanted to get all of my districts finished before i picked that up but you know what i think i might actually pop it down before because yeah thinking about it i really want man at arms and i want them quickly how many warriors have i actually got at the moment i've only got the one warrior i probably should pick up a couple more just check the barbarian clans aren't giving me anything there's only one barbarian clan that i know of at the moment and it's giving me galleys and it would just pump the galley straight into this inland sea so that wouldn't be very handy at all congo finished building the pyramids for me i think it was for me definitely for me yeah i'm gonna start working on apprenticeship i I don't know if we'll finish it right now, but we'll get it going quickly. There is another settler. Wonderful. We'll get this settler done. Get that settler done. We'll get one more. I think I'm going to actually go and settle there. Feels like a really weird place to settle, but it'll be on, on top of some furs and it would give me access to this four food, two culture tile, which is just amazing. And it would give me the era score from settling near the wonder and I can aqueduct later. So I, I think it should be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Maybe if I haven't got a, oh, hang on, hang on. Have I even got a place for my unique district? If I were to put myself down that, I'm gonna have to go and explore what's on the other side of the mountain. Don't know, we'll work it out. We'll work it out in a bit. I'm actually gonna just improve this mine. I was kind of holding off that, but I do need the iron per turn, I think. 
Right, let's get another warrior through quickly before we get the man at arms. I want at least a few that I can run in at the same time. A cad, I'm kind of keeping an eye on a cad by the way. So a cad wants a heavy chariot. So my capital is going to do that. We're going to go settler into heavy chariot and that will give me an envoy both at Singapore and a cad. That'll put me onto three in a cad and then I will be able to put into four in a second and that will break Congo's grip over it. Yeah, I just, if I can steal a cad, I feel like this war is going to be incredible incredibly successful compared to how it could be. There's the scientist. So we'll pop them down quickly. Engineering, mathematics, celestial navigation. I don't need to wait for any of those. We're just going to use them as soon as possible. But as you can see, Granada, we have two envoys there now. Wonderful. Three boosts. Bam, celestial navigation, engineering, mathematics, all 50% boosted as well. Handy, very handy indeed. Okay, it's not a very good Nah, <laughs> say a one, but there is one that I can build over there and it would give me a couple of mines around it. Yeah, really not a very good one. Can't build farms in the tundra. I could build, to be fair, I could also put one there. It would be a long way away from my city, but it would mean I could do a lot more around it. I don't know. We'll see which one is more useless than the other. I could, but again, I could put it on this hill, but that would, again, would just be tundra around it. So not very handy. This hill is next to my say one. I mean, in hindsight, I should have probably moved this one around a little bit more, but never mind. It's fine. Oh yeah, hang on. This is just going to build the swordsman straight out, isn't it? Oh, that's a bit annoying. Never mind. Should we get rid of the settler card now? Is it worth it? Probably is soon. We'll get the builder card. I will keep it for a sec. I'm still... No. There's only one turn of Sattler left. There's really no point keeping that. I'll put the Builder card in for now. Feels like a good shout. I mean, I could put the Scientist card in, but I just I want to get a great general. It's going to be a huge difference on this early game war. There is city number three. Gives me instant access to some wines. Makes me very happy. Oh, there's a tribal village over there. That's quite exciting. Send one of my armed units over there to go and pick it up. Perfect. Do I just, I'm still umming and ahhing as to whether or not picking up apprenticeship right now is a good move or a bad move, but I'm tempted to believe that it's a good move. Here's the last settler being pumped out though, and so actually keeps the population. Unbelievable. That's really handy. Do I want to go and get the furs? I think the furs are probably quite handy actually, and the extra culture from that tile and the food, it makes it worth it. So we're going to go and do that quickly for me. Lovely. City number four. Yay. Okay, I don't know about apprenticeship. Oh, it's it's sort of, I'm going to leave it alone just for now, but I've, I've almost got that upgrade. Almost got the upgrade. What's going to be good in the meantime? Mathematics. I did want Petra in my capital. That would be very handy. Just going to buy a cheeky little tile in this city. Let's remove the monument, chop down the rainforest. <laughs> Any good turn starts with chop down the rainforest and then we can get the unique district in six turns. Get off the trap village, there we go, perfect. Someone's built the great library, how dull. 20 diplomatic favor, it would be very handy if Congo didn't have negative gold, but they have negative gold. Right, that heavy chariot has given me an envoy at Singapore and a CAD, and I think, no, it wasn't quite enough to get Singapore on side. But I've got a spare envoy now, we're gonna get another one very soon, but the good thing is, is that if I were to go to war, with Congo now, what would happen is effectively we'd be at four envoys each. Then I would put an envoy with a CAD and that would knock Amani away and that would be five, two. Oh, that's really good. You know what? Actually, I think I don't really want to be waiting any longer for apprenticeship. I've only got a hundred gold. I don't quite have enough, which is a bit of a pain. I also don't have access to the general just yet. I've got a uh, faith generating fairly good. Oh, this is, this is close. I don't know when to attack. Oh, they're spreading their religion to me. Actually, I don't mind that at all. That is fine. You know what? Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop down that rainforest. That'll finish this so on. That so on will finish as well. Let's, yeah, well, I'm going to do it then. That's when we're going to flip to the next era. Sort of, yeah, I'm running, I'm running and between about five different plans at the moment, but I think we've got a good set of plans when we, when we think about it. It's all good. City number five as well on top of the furs and next to the beautiful volcano. Nothing could go wrong by being here. Nothing at all. Don't worry about it. Fine. Actually, that culture per turn is, that's like 30% boost for me. That's, that's, that's big, big culture money. And what was in the tribal hut? I didn't actually see what that was. There was some, something was in there. <laughs> something. I didn't, 
I didn't see what it was. But it was good. It must have been good, right? Right? Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop a envoy into Granada. That hopefully is going to find some more AI for me. Yes, we found other Egypt. That means we've got a trade partner now. Let me just move, um, if I move any unit, like this one will do. There we are. Hello, Isis Reborn. You have a lot of science per turn. 83, have you just gone full? Yeah, they're the ones that have gone full scientists. We'll we'll come back to you later. Actually, can we just make straight friendship with you? No. A six relationship maybe. I mean, you want to be my friend. Open borders. Oh, that's a lot. Fine, I'll give you a gift and a delegation. And you've got to be friends with me now, right? Oh yeah, look, they've got tons of gold. This is going to help massively. That's better. That's better. We have a trade partner now. Oh, it's so much better to have a trade partner in the game. Like Congo just ran out of gold really quickly and they've just been useless. Oh, of course, she's gone hermetic as well. That would explain a lot. That would explain a lot. Have you already got your universities up? No, they don't think they have. Have they? No, hang on. We're too early in the game, aren't we? Classical era. What are you talking about, Ursa? Let's make friendship with Cleopatra. There we go. Now you see, I've got an ally. She's met the other three. So they're all on that continent. Interesting. Barb encampment destroyed. And again, three era score is lovely to see. Let's go and make that extra fur. There's mathematics sorted. I'm going to just pick up masonry quickly, engineering first, and then we'll pick up masonry. But catapults, I don't think I'll need catapults, but having them is better than not having them. That's what I find. There's tasty watermill in my capital as well. Look at that. Oh, good. Farm tiles there. That's a 5-1 because it's next to my say one. So Boudicca has been taken. That means that somebody's going to grab Hannibal and I should grab... Actually, the best general of all of them, reducing war weariness by 25%. Oh, she's brilliant. Okay, that's worked really well for me. Oh, this sale one has been finished. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's get the library going. But I think we're now in a place where next turn we can chop that out. Ah, this, this library is almost at choppable level. We're going to sink in quite nicely with this, I think. We've, we've, got, we've got some good timings on stuff. Congo spreading all of their religion to me. It's fine. Don't mind that at all. Here we go. There we go. Right. That's the unique district finished. We'll get the library going. But you know what? I'm going to just campus research project. We're going to miss out on one library's worth of science. But honestly, I think right now it's all about momentum. And I just need I need the momentum here. We can't afford to wait for too long. So I'll just move everyone to campus research. We'll let the turn roll over. And then we're going to jump into the medieval era. Oh, you're going to give me 10 gold per turn for that, are you? Yeah. Okay, cool. I like the gold. Gold is good. Gold means more army for Ursa. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Dayboy91, Sean Gratis, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Devil X, Skeptical Bear, Craig Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amir E.C., Rom88, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, L. Truand, Creston, R.B. Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Shoelace, Burial, I'm Daft, Guberman, Clint Hennes, Thank you all for your support. It's amazing. See you all next time. Goodbye.